Hello and welcome to another episode of the Adobe Creative Suite podcast. My name is Terry White and I'm on the road, I'm on tour, but I decided to take a few minutes to record an episode on how to get started with Adobe Muse, codename. So Muse is a visual design, web design tool for designers. So it enables you to create websites without having to write the code by hand. So it's in public beta at this point. We're on beta six for this episode. Uh, It's a free download at this point, so you can uh, download it and try it out for yourself. You can work along with me or design your own sites, as many as you want for free while we're in a beta period. So where do you get it from? You head over to muse.adobe.com, which by the way, this site was built with Muse, and you just get beta six for either Mac or Windows. And then once you uh, download it, you can learn about the features, the specs, and pricing, and other things about it once it, you know, the pricing once the product goes live. And you can even see a showcase of sites that have been built with Muse, and just get some ideas of how this tool can be put to use. But the purpose of this quick episode is to get you started, and of course we won't build the entire site, but we will build a site as we go along in other episodes. So let's get started. Let's head over to Muse. And I just launched it um, like you would for the first time. It's giving me the uh, startup screen. And at this point, I can just say create new site. That's where you will begin if you don't have a site that you want to open. Now, Muse offers some pretty decent defaults. Uh, It offers a 960 pixel width by a 500 height, minimum height site. Um, And then everything else, you could just go ahead and pretty much say OK, but I'm going to make one change. I'm going to uh, increase the number of columns. And these columns are basically going to be guides for me to know how things are laid out throughout my pages. Now, when I click OK, that will take me to this area of Muse, which divides it into two areas. There's the bottom, which is the masters. Think of these if you're an InDesign user, which Muse is very much like InDesign. This is, this, these will be your master pages, and then at the top would be your site or document or web pages. So it, of course, defaults you with one home page, figuring every site has to have at least one page. And uh, that site is based on, as you can see, the A master, which is the master page that it gives you by default. At the top here, we have, pl- we have four stages, plan, design, preview, and publish. We'll, of course, talk about those in more detail as we go along. And it's a tabbed window interface, which means you see website one, which is the one we're currently working on because we haven't saved it. And then any open pages would be to the right of that. And if you had a second website open, then it would be website, let's say, two, for example. And the pages for that site would be to the right of it. Up in the upper hand right-hand corner is a sign-in feature, which I will go ahead and do. And if you don't have an account, what you can do is go ahead and sign up for one. But this is to sign into Business Catalyst. Business Catalyst is the uh, hosting service for Muse if you want to use Adobe's hosting. You can also use your own hosting and just export out the HTML. So I'm signed in. I'm just going to go ahead now and continue working. Now, at this point, you're, you're in this planning stage, and think of this as wireframing your site. So you're thinking about what pages you're going to have, how they're going to be connected together, without even thinking about putting any content on those pages just yet. So, for example, uh, I know I'm going to have a home page for this site. By the way, the site that we're redoing here is a site for a users group that I founded years ago, and that site was it's, it's, it's up and running. But it's, it's, it's in need of update. It's, uh, it was created using Adobe Go Live years ago, and I had just never had the time to bring it over to Dreamweaver or anything else. So I figured that would be a good site to practice with Muse on. So at some point, I'll transition that site over to Muse, but we'll at least be able to play with it and design it here in, in, in the beta. So um, now, back to the planning stage. So think of this plan stage, for those of you who are InDesign users, as I like to look at this as your pages panel. So if you were in the pages panel in InDesign, you would have your uh, you would have your master pages and your document pages. 
and you would be able to build as many of each as you wanted. So I look at this just like the big, a big giant pages panel for InDesign. So now let's talk about the pages we want. So I'm definitely gonna want an About Us page. So I just click the plus sign to the right of the page and it gave me an About Us. Now if I click the plus sign to the left, that it will insert the page in between. So the next page, we're gonna have a meetings page. It talks about our meetings in detail. Uh, we're going to have a news page, which will most likely just link to the blog, but you know, we might put some other news there. Breaking news, for example. And then a join page, join us. So of course, this is a user group. We sign up members. So we want people to um, be able to join. And now, um, that's the main, those are the main pages for the site, but we might also have uh, sub pages within those um, pages. So for example, under the meetings page, I might have a page that shows the directions to the meeting location. Um, under, and I might also have, since the meetings are recorded, I'll branch off that directions page and we'll have a, Mac group TV page because that's where the um, episodes will be for people that want to watch the meetings that they missed. So as you can see, this is really about planning. This is, you know, how do you want your site to look? What do you want? Not what do you want, how do you want it to look, but how do you want it to connect to each other? And of course we can drag, we can rearrange, we can put things in different orders, uh, you know, or different order if we change our mind after the fact. So you're not locked in stone on any of this. You can go change the names, uh, delete pages, add more pages in between, add more branching, do whatever you want to do or whatever you need to do based on uh, the site as it grows. Okay, so that kind of gets you started there. You just continue to plan your site and build your site in, in this wireframe mode the way you want. Now you notice that all the pages look the same. That's because they're all based on this master page. So let's double click on this master page to bring it up so we can actually edit it. And uh, I'm working at a small resolution here for my recording. So uh, everything is going to be a little cramped here uh, as far as working. So I might scale this down every now and then just so you can see more of the page. But you, you know, on most computer resolutions, you'll be able to work at 100% if not greater so that you can work at the uh, optimum resolution for the site and look at it. And this is just your view. It's not changing the actual size of the page. So now uh, we're, we're in the actual master page. And again, in the tab interface here, we have the website and the master page we just double clicked on. And you have these bars here that allow you to adjust uh, the page. In this case, this would be the top of the page. So if I drag that down, the top of the page area gets taller and you know keep scrolling that up and down. We have the header, which this, by the way, this white rectangle is your page content. The gray area is the browser fill, so the, the area of the browser around it. And then we have the footer, and then we have the bottom of the page, which we can grow or make bigger or smaller. And then we have the bottom area here. Now, the browser fill defaults to this gray color, and I know that I'm gonna wanna change it. So what I'm gonna do is, I don't know what color I wanna change it, I could also fill it with an image. Um, but in this case, I know that I want the color to match the site that we used to have. So there's a good thing because there's there's a piece of uh, a graphic that used to be on that footer that I can bring in and just simply match the color because it was the color of the original background. So here's what we're going to do. To bring in a graphic into this master page, just like in InDesign, you would choose File, Place. And then you would go Find Your Graphic. So here's the footer graphic that we used to use on the old site. And it's a, notice it's a .psd file. So while you can bring in native, or you can bring in JPEGs and GIFs and ping files that you would normally use on the web, you can also bring in Photoshop files and Muse will automatically optimize those files when you export out your site. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and bring in this Photoshop file. And because it is a Photoshop file with multiple layers, it's giving me the choice to bring it in as a composite image, meaning bring in the whole thing or bring in an individual layer. Of course, I want the whole thing in this case. And now it's asking me where do I want to place it? Just like an InDesign document, I can go ahead and click and it will bring it in at full size. Now again, that's going to look a little rough because we're, we're zoomed out at 75%. If we zoom into 100% and scroll down, then it looks great. 
Okay, so next we want to deselect it just by clicking off of it, and that will get us back to our browser fill color. And we click on the color of gray that it is, and then we can use you know any color mix we want. We can put in our own values of RGB or hex. We can choose a swatch, but you know what? I love the eyedropper because the eyedropper is going to let me sample exactly the color that's there, and voila, I can even make a new swatch out of that. So if I ever want to use that color again, I've got it there. I don't have to use the eyedropper to get it again. Okay, so now let's go ahead and zoom back out. So we've got our browser fill color there, and we're, you know, normally we have an add at the bottom here, so we'll save room for that. We won't tighten that up anymore. But now we're going to build the area at the top of the page. So, uh, and again, this is above the content area. So Muse has drawing tools. We're just going to go ahead and grab a rectangle here, and we're just going to go ahead and draw out a rectangle at the top of our page here. And that rectangle defaults to white with a black fill. I don't want, I'm sorry, white with a black stroke. We don't want a stroke at all, so we'll just change it to zero. And, of course, I want that bar to go across the entire page, which we haven't done that yet, or entire browser window. And I also want it to be the color of the header graphic that's going to sit on top of it. So let's bring in that graphic. Let's go to File, Place. Let's go find our graphic. And again, it can be in any graphic format that would be supported on the web, or it could be a Photoshop file. We'll bring that in, and again, same choices, bring in the whole thing or an individual layer. And just like InDesign, again, I can click, it brings in that graphic, I can move that graphic around, I get smart guides to let me know when it's perfectly centered. And once it's been centered, I can go back to my rectangle that I was working with, grab the fill color for that rectangle, grab the eyedropper, you've seen me do this before, sample that color, now that rectangle is the exact color I need it to be. And, more importantly, now I can tell it that since it's the right color, I also want it to, and by the way, let's zoom in on it at 100%, just so we can make sure we're making sure it's the right height. There we go, that should be good. And same here, here is what the height and uh, the top and the bottom of it are good. Now, if I drag the, the width of this rectangle and touch the side. You notice the line turns red. That lets me know that it's snapping to it and because it's snapping to it I will get it automatically expanding the size of the browser window. So no matter how big the browser window is on the person's monitor that blue bar will go all the way across on the left side. So we want to do the same thing on the right side. So once again we're going to zoom out. We're just going to go ahead and drag this until it touches and turns red and now we know that that is zoomed out. And we can preview this, that's what preview is for, to see what it looks like or what it would look like in a browser. So there it is. That bar is the entire width of my window. And again, no matter how short or tall my, or wide my window will be, that bar will be okay. Okay, great. So now let's get to the content area. Content area is a, is a white rectangle with a black stroke. Uh, we can go ahead, we can even round the corners of it, which I kind of like that look. And we can, of course, change the fill color of this to whatever we want. And we can tell it that it has no stroke if we don't want one. We can even add effects like a drop shadow, which I think is pretty cool. So I'm going to turn the drop shadow on. And, of course, because everything should have a drop shadow. Just kidding. And we can lower the opacity of that drop shadow just a bit. Okay, cool. So we've got a drop shadow going on around our content area. And again, we're just designing the look and feel, feel, look and feel of the pages. We haven't really designed the page itself yet. So I'm going to, by the way, take this content, this, both these bars, and move them up a bit. Because I realize there's something else I'm going to want below them. There we go. And uh, let's preview that again just to make sure everything's still working. Good, it is. And now let's do one more thing. Let's go back out for a second and look at the wireframe. And as you can see, all the pages update based on what I put on the master, which is great. We go back to the master, and there's one more thing I know I'm going to want on every, other, every page, and that is the navigation bar. How do I build that? Well, you have this area, you have this widgets library, 
And in this widgets library, there's a menus option. And if we scroll down here, let's see, we might need to pull this up. I need to separate, or maybe not. I'm at a, such a low resolution, I may not be able to get to it. There we go. So we want our uh, we want a horizontal uh, menu bar, uh, or we want an actual menu bar. So we can drag out a bar, we can make it horizontal or vertical, and let's go ahead and just drag that out. And the beauty of this is that not only did it create one for us, but notice the names that it's using. It's using the exact names of the pages that we've built so far because it knows about the rest of the site. So it built a functioning, working menu bar that is uh, linked and ready to go to all the pages we've created. So I'm going to zoom back out just a bit here because there's one more option I'm going to want is I want to be able to get to those sub pages. So the parts, uh, we're going to say show the left icon there. And everywhere there's a page where a person can drill down, we can actually have it. Actually, we don't want that. We want this. We want to be able to get to all the pages. So in other words, wherever there's a page where a person can drill down, like on directions in Mac Group TV, we want the user to be able to click the arrow to drill down to those options. Okay, looks good. And that little blue icon is a menu. Anytime you have it, that little blue icon, it's usually a menu for what you have selected so you can do more. Okay, so this is the foundation of our site. It's ready to go. We can, of course, always come back and do more work here, but it's kind of good to go for now. So now we can go back to the website, which, again, now all the pages have the menu bar. And by the way, you can redesign that menu bar. You don't have to stick with it being the same color and font and size and all that. You can double-click. You can edit any aspect of this bar. So you can edit the fill color, which right now is that gradient. You can change it to a different color, change it to not be a gradient. You can make it anything you want. And in future episodes, we will do more design work with the options here. But I just wanted to point out, you know, not, not all of your menus have to be gray gradient with white text. You can make them whatever you want them to be. So now let's go back to the website view. And let's now start working with content. So let's double click on the home page and again we'll zoom out on the home page just so we can see it better and now at this point we're ready to start putting content on what would be our home page so this at this point it's up to you to put what what you want on your page now for some examples here I'm going to place um, some things that are normally on this site's page so for example we normally have a calendar icon of what the next meeting date will be so that's a Photoshop file, which again, I can select that as a comp composition or a composite. I can click to place that anywhere I want. I can drag it around just like I would on a page layout program. I can scale it down. And, and again, no matter what I do here, um, Muse will optimize it for the final output. Okay, now I want some text on this page. So I'm going to bring up text edit. And, and the only reason I'm bringing up text edit is not to type, because I've already got the text typed, and I just want to open it, copy it, and paste it. So we're just going to go to that file, and uh, we're going to go ahead and grab our welcome text. So we'll just open that up. We'll select this text, copy it, come back to Muse. And again, if you were going to type, you would just grab your type tool, drag out a frame, and start typing. But because I didn't want to have to sit here typing in front of you, I've already created the text in a, in a text document that we just opened. So we'll go ahead and pull that frame out, click into it, and paste, and there is our text. Now you get all your standard text formatting. So we can make the font size larger for that welcome. We can make it whatever font we want it to be. It will produce the web fonts that are common in just about every browser out there. Uh, you can make you can make any other choices you want, and if you choose other fonts, then Muse will automatically turn that into a graphic because not everyone's going to have your fonts. You can, of course, make this whatever color you want uh, for the text. So I can sample, for example, this lighter blue that's here and start matching my graphics and my text. So that text is there. I can, of course, uh, here we're going to create another frame down here. And in that frame, we're going to go back and grab the text just so you don't have to, again, so you don't have to watch me type it. 
I'm just going to choose open here and I've got next meeting. So we're just going to select that text, copy, paste, come here, and paste inside. And again, we would begin formatting that the way we want it to look. For example, I don't like that being so condensed. So we might drag that frame out a little bit and make it, of course, a little shorter. Okay, so you, you get the idea. It's kind of laying out text and graphics just like you would on a regular page layout program, uh, like InDesign. And, of course, you have your same similar InDesign options of placing things. Now let's do two more things. Let's do, uh, before we call it a day for this episode, number one, our next meeting is not December 27th. It's actually February 26th, I believe. So I want to change that. How do I do that? Well, if I right-click on this object, so let's choose Edit Original. And that will open up Photoshop. It will open up that file that we just said Edit Original on. And there it is. And now it's got the same layers from Photoshop because we're in Photoshop. So I can change the month, for example, using my Type Tool to February and Commit. And we change our date to the 26th instead of the 27th, and commit, save it, close it, switch back to Muse, Muse automatically updates. So it's, it's very similar to what I used to use Smart Objects to do in Go Live. I can now just update or edit original anytime I want to update that Photoshop work. Okay, last but not least, let's go back to the map or go back to the website view. And on the Mac Group TV page, I want to actually put one of the episodes or put the viewer for the episodes in there. Problem is the viewer is code and there's no code editing in Muse, but there is the ability to add code that you grab from websites like a YouTube embed or pretty much any HTML code that you grab from a site that you want to use on your site. So here's or you know HTML that you wrote yourself if you do if you do know how to do it. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and simply switch back, open, and grab the code for that. Select all, copy, and go back to Muse. And we're just going to simply say object, insert HTML, paste our code in, click OK. Wait a few seconds because what Muse will actually do is it will render that code and bring in that object for you to use. So let's go out here. There's my object. I can pick it up, move it, put it where I want on the page. And now if I were to preview that page, it will actually bring in that HTML. And there we are. That episode's now ready to play because there's a web, web browser built right into Muse. So... That's it for this episode of the Adobe Creative Suite podcast. As you can see, you can get started with Muse and start designing your websites immediately and easily, just as you would an InDesign page. And again, more about Muse at muse.adobe.com. My name is Terry White. Thanks for watching.